Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the C++ for Java developers series. Now in this episode, we are gonna be going over pointers, okay? And this is a very tough concept for a lot of programmers to get. So don't worry if you don't understand it immediately. First of all, I did implement the vector3.cpp in H. There's a link in the description if you want to check out that solution. I am not gonna go over it though for the sake of time. Now, we're gonna start off by just clearing out all of this stuff, all right? And I'll go ahead and leave all the includes and stuff because that is fine for our case. Now, what is a pointer, okay? Well, a pointer is defined by looking like this. So you could say float star, and I'll call it star, but it is a pointer, equals, and we'll say a new float. Now, in the last episode, I told you not to use new unless you know why you're using it. And this is the reason why, right? Because now we are allocating memory on the heap. Every time you do a new, you must also do a delete. So we have created this float on the heap. We must remove it from the heap as well because C++ is not gonna manage that for us. Now, what is a pointer though? What does this do? Well, let's take a look at what the value is, okay? So if we go ahead and hit a breakpoint right over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and start the debugger. If you look at your watch table, which should be in the bottom left corner, we can go ahead and look at locals. And notice how right now uh, A's value is a bunch of C's. It's undefined because we haven't actually executed. So hit F10 to step over that piece of code. Then what we get is A's value is this big long number, right? It says uh, 0, 0, 0, 27, blah, 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 right? Well, what is that? That is a memory address, okay? I have the memory window open over here. If we were to copy this memory address and then paste it into the address bar up here, and I'm just gonna remove all those zeros so that we just get the address, then hit enter. Uh, it takes us to this location that you can see right over here, okay? And then uh, if we look at it, the first two zeros is actually what represent this value A, okay? And how do I know that? Well, I know that a float is four bytes big. Each of these zeros represents one byte. So this is zero, zero, which means that this is two bytes. Now, let's fill that with a value so that we actually know what's happening, right? This is just a location in memory. So how do we actually put stuff into that memory? Well, you can use something called the dereference operator, which works by doing a star, then a variable. And then we'll go ahead and say this is 3.14F. And I'm actually gonna change this up a bit because it's gonna be hard to tell if we are looking at the correct value. So let's change this to an integer. And instead of doing 3.14, I'll do the value four, which should be a one zero in binary or a zero four in hexadecimal. So we should see zero four located at A's value. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this again. This should place four into A's location in memory. So now if we look at A, we still have this big long memory address. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that value once again, paste it up to here, and then just remove the four. All right, now look at that. We have a zero four there because we have just put the value four into that address's location. Now, before continuing on, I just wanted to introduce you to the syntax. Let's take a look at what's actually happening here by drawing some stuff out. What's actually happening when we do this line of code in C++, when we say int star a equals a new int? Well, what ends up happening is inside of C++, we have a big block of memory called the heap. And technically the heap is whatever memory is available to the machine that is operating and the operating system hands out memory from the heap. Now, basically, let's just imagine that each of these are 32 bits big, each of these cells. And so what we want to do is we say, hey, we have an integer, which is the size of an integer, right? And we want to just get some memory that points to that size. So what the operating system will do is it says, hey, I have some free memory right here. And it says, this is 32 bits, which is what you need. So now we're gonna give you that address. And so what is stored inside of A, as we saw, is not any value, it's an address. This is a really important concept to keep in mind because A is not a value. It is not an integer, it is an integer's pointer. It's a pointer to an integer, okay? And so if we wanted to assign something, we did this thing called the dereferencing operator, right? We said int star A. What happens when we do int star A is it's saying, okay, give me what's inside of this block. Don't give me the address. And then when we say that equals four, it says, okay, I'm gonna put four inside of this block. So now this block contains the number four. I don't want you to get too hung up on the details. It's not that complicated and it doesn't need to be that complicated. If you just remember that we have a block of memory, A is pointing to some location in that block. 
let's say we defined another new variable called integer b, which was equal to another new integer. And technically, this would actually be an int star. So what happens when we do this? Well, then it goes and looks for the next available piece of memory, which just so happens to be right here. And it says b is pointing to this location. So then if we do the same thing we did for a, and we say star b equals, uh, let's say the value 10, then what ends up happening is we get the value 10 located in this block of memory. Now, real quickly, I want you to think about how you would switch the pointers a and b. So I want you to think about how you would make a point to this block instead and make b point to this block and basically destroy their original address. Think about that for a minute and how you would do that. Now, the way you would end up doing this is basically we're just swapping these two values, right? We're swapping what a and b point to. So we could say int star temporary or TMP equals a. So right now we have a value called temp, which if I remove all this junk, which is pointing to the same location as a because we've just assigned it to that value, right? Pointers work the same way. If we assign a pointer to another pointer, it points to the same location. Now what we can do is we can say a equals b. What is this going to do? Well, this is going to say now a, instead of pointing here, a is going to point here, right? And then we lose the original reference. So I'll just mark that out in red. And then we can say b equals temp, which means now b is going to point where temp is pointing. Well, temp is pointing right here, and then we can cross out b. So we've basically just swapped these two pointers. Now, if we went ahead and said star b equals one, what's going to happen is it's going to change this location in memory instead of this location. Okay, so instead of this saying four, what we're going to see now is one inside of this block of memory. We've changed that block of memory simply by moving B's address to point to this guy instead, okay? Now this can get pretty complicated as you can see if you continue to do more and more stuff like this. Let's go back to the code and actually try this out and debug the code and see what happens. All right, so I am back in the code over here. Let's go ahead and just code what we literally just talked about. So we have int star A. Let's go ahead and make an int star B, which is another int. Then we're gonna say star A equals four and we'll say star a equal or star b equals 10 and then we'll print these out just so that we know so we'll say a and then we'll do a percent d and how would we print this value well we would do star a to dereference it right we want the value we don't want what a is we want what a is pointing to and then we could do the same thing don't forget a new line we'll just print f b percent d slash n and we'll print out star b so these are the values before. Then we're gonna go ahead and swap them. So we'll say int star temp equals a. So now temporary is pointing to a. Then we can say a equals b, b equals temp. The pointers have been swapped now. And so then if we go ahead and say star b equals one, and when we print out, I'll just copy and paste this. We'll just print out these values again and see what happens. Then what we should see is that b is one and a uh, should now be 10, right? A will be 10 because we've switched where it's pointing to. And that's sort of the magic of what we'll see where it happens. And let's also delete B just so that we're good programmers and we are getting rid of our memory. I'm not going to go ahead and do any breakpoints. We'll just run this through and see that it matches our expectations. All right. And we see exactly what we'd expect to see. So right here, A and B are four and 10. We see four, 10. Then we swap the pointers. Now A is pointing to where B was pointing to, which was 10. B is pointing to where A was pointing to. So that is now uh, technically four. And then when we print them, we've already changed B to one. So we see that B is one and A is now 10. Let's make this a little bit more explicit. Let's not change B. And you'll see that if we just print them out, then it has just swapped the values. And sure enough, if we do this and we print it out, we see that we get four ten, and then we get 10 four. So it is literally just swapped the values of A and B by swapping the pointers. Now, if we introduce one more operator, we can do some pretty interesting things. So if we go ahead and we say int a equals 10, uh, this is not a pointer, but what if we want to get where a was? What if we want to point to the same variable as a? Well, we could say int star a pointer equals the address of the variable a, okay? So this 
ampersand is the address operator. And if we say this is the address of A, then this is pointing to what A is pointing to. So if we go ahead and say print F A, and we'll give it A, and then we can go ahead and change A by not even touching A. We'll just say star A pointer equals uh, 50. Then we'll go ahead and print A again. And what we should see is that we have changed the value of A without ever touching A, right? So we're printing A here, but we're not changing it. We're changing the pointer, but technically it's pointing to that memory block and we're changing that memory block. So if we go ahead, print this out, sure enough, what we get is A is 10, then A is 50. We're printing the same variable, but we haven't changed that variable. This is one of the great powers of pointers. Another interesting thing we can do is we can go ahead and print the address of A. So if we go ahead and do address of A, then do a percent P for pointer, then uh, don't forget that new line as well. We can go ahead and just print out a pointer. And so this will print out the address of A. So I'm going to put a breakpoint right here and we should see if we pull up the command prompt window, we see that we get this memory address ending in F754. Well, if we look at our watch window, would you look at that A pointer? It says its address is ending in F754. And then if we were to copy this, paste it into here, remove that little bit, we can see that we have the value 32 at this location, which is hexadecimal for 50. At least I believe it is, it should be. <laughs> Just so that we can see how this really works, let's do something a little bit cool too. If you go into the watch window by just clicking this tab down here, you can go ahead and type in commands that uh, get evaluated at real time. So we can say star a pointer equals four. So we're gonna change the value inside of a. Now you can see that that just evaluates to four, but if we look up here, that block of memory has changed. If we look at our locals again, a has changed to four. A pointer is the same, but the value has changed inside. All right, so this has been a very brief introduction to pointers. I hope you guys understand what is going on. Uh, the same concept can be applied to complex structures. So if you wanted to, you could also type in vector three, vector equals a new vector three. And this should be vector three star because this is a pointer, all right? And this creates a new vector. Now, one more thing that I'm going to mention before closing is that if you want to change the values inside of a vector, you could do this. You could do what we did with a, right? We could say star vector dot a or dot x equals 10. And you're seeing that we're getting an error here. And that's just because we have to wrap the star vector in parentheses. You can see that I don't use this method that often just because it looks ugly and it's kind of weird, but we're dereferencing the vector. Then we're setting the x value to 10. Well, we could also do something a little bit different. Instead of doing that, we could say vector and then arrow x equals 10. This is basically called a member operator. So it's a pointer to member operator is how it is defined. And if we go ahead and say vector arrow y, we could set y to something else as well. And you could do the same thing for z. This basically changes the value inside of this vector. And it only works for structures or classes, objects, right? Because you only have members inside of a structure where we have members, right? So this is how you would change it inside of a structure. And if you were operating with something, say like just a straight up integer, then you would have to dereference it in order to change it. And once again, delete the integer, delete the vector, because you don't want to forget to clean up your memory. So with that in mind, just think about this. This is basically the same as the dot operator, right? If we were to have a vector three vector, and I'll call this uh, vector B equals, and we'll just leave it like that. You could access its members with the dot operator. Okay. And this is basically the dot operator except for pointers. So if you have a pointer, use the arrow. If you don't have a pointer, if you just have an object, use the dot operator. And that's how simple those accessors are. For today's challenge, uh, this may be something that seems simple, but basically what I want you to do is I want to have a function of that returns nothing and takes in a vector three uh, and modifies the vector three within the function. Okay. Now this is not how it will actually work, right? Because this is not going to modify the vector. But basically what I want to do is I want to be able to pass in my vector. So say I do something like call the function 
with just a vector. And actually, let's call this function initialize. And this should initialize the vector to the values 10. OK, so I want you to be able to call this function with this vector and actually fill all those values just by calling the function. Notice how it doesn't return anything. Now, this will not work right, right? Because what's going to end up happening the way this is currently is it's going to copy this vector, send it to the function, and then change the copy inside of here, then do nothing. I want you to change it so that it takes in the address of the vector, changes the vector inside of here, the actual vector that we have right here, and then once you print it out afterwards, it shows 10 for all the values, which is what it should be. And just to make sure that it is super clear, we should initialize it over here to zeros. That way, by the time it comes out the vector, it should have all tens. So give that a go and hopefully you can get this accomplished and we'll teach you a very important concept, which is passing pointers to functions to modify values. Anyways, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode when we will start talking about a little bit more about pointers. Originally, I was going to talk about references, but we're going to talk a bit more about pointers and then move on to references after that. Anyways, I'll see you guys then.